<clears throat> you are all that matters. You are all that matters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. God bless you all. God bless you all. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depends on what time is in your country. I bless you all in the name of God. <clears throat> Praise God. I'm happy to come live this afternoon to see my my beloved brethren in the Lord. It's been a while. <laughs> oh my God. How are you all doing? How is everybody doing? I hope you're all good. By the grace of God, I am fine. I thank God for the gift of life. I thank God you are alive. I thank God you're healthy. I thank God you can join me all life just now. We bless God. The Lord said, in every situation we find ourselves, we should worship Him. We should give Him praise. Hallelujah. So I'm so grateful that we are gathering here this afternoon again to look into the Word of God as we have been doing. I'm so sorry I've been off online for a while now. <laughs> You know, <clears throat> but it's all to the glory of God. It is all to the glory of God. So I'm here this afternoon by the grace of God to share the mind of God with us. Praise God. I'm here to share the mind of God with us. Beloved, as you're coming in, can you just quickly <clears throat> click your share button? Give your friends a wee invitation, let them join us, and let us reason together. The word of God said, come, let's reason together. The time we are in right now is the time of reasoning. It's the time of coming in the presence of God, whether in a group, whether individually, to seek God's mind and his opinion concerning our lives you know because this time is not the time to joke it's not the time to joke it's time to readjust and know what we are doing with god hallelujah enjoy that song why you invite your friends to join us please you are my jesus you are all that matters. You are all that matters. No way, no way. You are all that matters. No way, no way. You are all that matters. No way, no way. You are all that matters. No way. It's God that matters in the situation of things as it is right now in the whole world. It's God. 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 <laughs> hey. Listen to that song. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Invite your friends. Very powerful song. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody worship him wherever you're watching. Worship him wherever you are watching from. Be in the spirit and worship the Lord, beloved. Bless his holy name. 
appreciate him for who he is. God cannot change from who he is. He remains the same. The same God of today, yesterday and tomorrow. God should matter to us. God should matter to us. Beloved, enjoy that song. Enjoy it. I want you to soak yourself with that song. Enjoy it before we go ahead. Enjoy that song. Worship Him wherever you are. Open your heart. Tell Him what you want. Open up to God. Open up to God right now. As you're opening up to God, you tell Him to minister to you. Through this message you're about to hear, tell Him to minister to you because the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. The Holy Spirit is what will make you understand why we have gathered here this afternoon. It is the Holy Spirit that will make you understand that, not me. You are all that matters. Open your heart. Talk to Him. I don't know what you're going through wherever you are right now. But speak to the Lord. Speak to Him. Humble yourself. Be open. Tell Him your mind. Tell Him your heart. Tell Him that He's all that matters to you. Right now as it is. That Lord... You are all that matters to me now. Honestly, it's God who oh, matters to me. Oh. God matters a lot. Because he's the one who owns the world. He's the one who holds your life. It's him. We're only making effort in life. Doesn't mean we have power to do things in our own way. It's God that has the power to make all things to work out the way we want it. Yes. Oh, wait, oh, wait, you're all that matters. What will I live for? What will I live for? If I don't have you, my life. If I don't have Jesus in my life, what will I gain? Will I gain? Hmm. If, if God takes the Holy Ghost away, come on, <laughs> Jesus, that one is powerful. Come on, come on, somebody. What will you live for if God takes away the Holy Ghost? Hmm. The Holy Ghost has to do with your life, your spirit, your mind, your soul. Imagine if He takes it away. What happens to man? Man becomes nothing. Hmm. That song is powerful. Away, away. You are the mother's. Oh, when, oh, when you are all that matters. Oh, when, oh, when you are all that matters. Oh, when, oh, when you are all that matters. Oh, when, oh, when you are all that matters. Until you come to a point where is God that matters to you. You have not arrived though as a child of God. Until you come to a place where is God that matters to you. You have not arrived. Hmm. Remember the Bible says we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Walking out for salvation. Meaning that you need to do something. You need to do something. You need to put God in front. In front of your destiny. In front of your melody. In front of whatever you do. In front of anything you do. Putting God at the center of your heart. Whatever you are doing in life. God matters. The fear of God matters. The fear of God matters. The fear of God matters. It is lack of the fear of God that has brought nations where they are today. It is lack of the fear of God. It is lack of 
love for another person. Lack of love for other people, lack of unity, lack of, you know, so many things. If God matters to you and I, there are some certain things we won't do in life. If God matters to us, there are some certain things we will not do. If God matters, there are some things we will not even think of, not to talk of bringing them into, into existence. There are some things we will not even imagine, not to talk of, you know, acting them. If God matters to you and I, beloved, the world as it is today, and what is going on in the world of today, we won't be experiencing it. If God matters to you, if God matters to you, reason that word very well, does God matter to you? What matters to you? What matters to you now? Is it God? Or what you still believe in? What is it that matters to you right now? We have come to the face of it. We are in the face of it now. Nowhere to run to. <laughs> hey, nowhere to run to. Just like in the days of Noah. When the Lord sent Noah to, you know, go out and tell his people that he's coming. That his word remains the same. That his word no man can touch. That they should live according to the word of God. He should tell the people of, you know, you know the, the, the children of God, that his coming is near. They were making mock of Noah. Laughing at Noah, using him as a caricature, using him as a talk of the day. Anywhere they gather, they are discussing Noah. Noah become a mockery in the whole city. But the Lord told him, my son, keep doing what I have told you to do. And Noah kept on telling them to repent and come to Jesus, that the time is near. They thought it was a joke. But within a tinkle of a night, something happened. Something happened and the Lord sent rain. Rain that wiped, you know, wiped off the, the, the generation of Noah as at that time. And they were running to, 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 to trees, running to mountains, running to different places. And the Bible said those places could not save them. Those places they were running to could not save them. What happened to them? They all sank into the water and they died. Those who heed to the voice of Noah, those who heed to the voice of Noah as a servant of God, because God used his servant to warn people, to, to, to remind people of the pestilence that is about to happen, the things that is about to take place. But because human beings are full of rebellious spirit, you know, they are full of themselves. Because they are still breathing, they are still living. They can still afford money to buy whatever they want. They can get job, they can do anything they want. They can travel to all nations. They can, they can do whatever because they are themselves. They now think they are now become the Lord of their life. The Bible made us to understand that no man owns his life. You don't owe your life. Your life, your soul, your spirit belongs to God. Because you don't know how you came into this world. You don't even know when, you, when you, you were conceived in your mother's womb. That one alone is a mystery on its own. Have you ever sat down and said, when my mom was carrying me in her, in her womb, did you even know that you were there? You didn't even know that you were in your mother's womb. It's a mystery on its own. It's a reason to even make you understand there is God somewhere. There is this man called God. The creator of the whole universe. Beloved, I am here to share with you the word of God. I am here to remind you of something. Something <laughs> the Lord said many years ago and is happening now. I vividly remembered one. I, that is it. I precisely remembered one. But a um, few days ago, I think on the 17th of this March, a sister called me and was telling me, she said, Evangelist, I don't know, maybe you still remember what is happening today. The Lord, the Lord used you to say it when we were using our, sec our, our when we moved to um, in here, you know, street. Because at some point we lost our place where we were using for fellowship. One in Chicago Community Center like that, we lost it. And we got a place again at the heart of Aberdeen, at the heart of Aberdeen, you know, 
we were using there, she said that was where the Lord used you to prophesy about this thing that is happening now. And she was telling me, she was telling me how the Lord was saying it through me at that time. That is just exactly as it's going now. Beloved, it might look like a joke. It might look like a play. I'm not here to say, you know, rob word or look, make it look like something. You know me, I don't usually have time for that. I tell people as it is. I tell you the word of God as the Lord is laying it in my heart. It is up to you to take it and run with it. It is up to you to caution yourself right now. It is up to you to begin to make decisions that will help your soul after you depart this word. After you depart this word. This word is not our dwelling place. This word is not our dwelling place. Who matters? Who matters to you? Is it God that matters to you now? Or your friend, your job, your marriage, your husband, your wife, your children, your money, your cars, your houses, your recognition, your popularity, your position. I don't know what matters to you. There are a lot of things people, you know, I am not saying that those things are not good. But remember why you are enjoying those things. Are you remembering that there is a place you will meet yourself after this word here? That place is heaven or is either hell. You will either appear in two places after you have departed this world. What will not make you go there? Either heaven or the hell. It is how you live your life. It is how you prepare for your end. The Bible says, For it is appointed unto a man to die once and after that, the judgment. Every man will face the judgment of God. No matter how big or small you are. Every man must face six feet. Six feet when the time comes. Nobody can run away from it. If you can run away with it or if you, if you are the Lord of your life. If you are the man that owns your life. Why can't you say, oh death, don't come. Or six feet, you are, you are not my portion. Nobody can resist it. Nobody. That is another mystery behind the, the power that is in the word of God. The mystery behind the power. Death is irresistible when it comes to a man's time. It's irresistible. You can't resist that six feet. You can't resist judgment day. You can't resist it. The Bible says we must all appear there. Beloved, I am here not to scare you. I am here this afternoon not to make you feel frightened or feel condemned or feel biased or feel somehow. But I am here this afternoon to remind you again and again and again like I've always been doing, which I will continue to do until the Lord calls. Because I have nothing but truth for you people. I owe you people nothing but the truth about the word of God. I can't tell you less of that or more of that. Because the Bible says, none shall add to my word and none shall subtract. If you are adding to the word of God, it, mean, it means you are fabricating what the scripture is not. If you are not removing Moving. It means you are, not, you are not saying it exactly as the Lord is laying it in your heart. Maybe you are afraid of one person or the other. Maybe you are afraid of one thing or the other. You are not painting the word of God. You are not making it look like it's a play. None shall add and none shall subtract. Beloved, I am here this afternoon to tell you to be still. Be still. The Bible says the Lord knows his own. Are you among them that the Lord knows in this hour? The Lord knows his own. And he said in the days of adversary, in the days of sorrow, 
in the days of pain, in the days of weeping, in the days of gnashing of teeth, he said, I will not forget my people. I will be my, their God. I will be for them. I will stand for them. I will protect them. I will see them through. I will make them cry no more. Beloved, this is not the time to weep. Or begin to, to shiver. What are you shivering for? What are you, what are you crying for? What are we weeping for? The Bible said the just shall live by faith. What is the faith we are talking about? The substance of things not seen, the evidence of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things hoped for. You are hoping for something as a child of God. You are hoping that one day at the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall, you shall, you shall, you shall move with him. You shall move with him. You shall spend eternity with him. You may have not seen it. You may have not even... But you have believed. You have faith. You believe the word of God by faith. You believe what the Lord is saying. Because you are endued with the Holy Spirit. Who is the perfect convincer? Who will convince you that what Evangelist Loving is telling you today is the right thing? Is him that will convince you and tell you it's right time I come back to God. It's right time I amend some things in my life. It's right time I begin to set my priorities right. It's right time I begin to think and think wisely. Not just thinking. People can think and think, but their thinking is, is, is just nonsense. It makes no meaning. It has no value to their destiny or to their soul. Who matters to you? Who matters to you? In this time, in this hour, Rabba Shata Brada Dabash. What matters to you, child of God? In this season, what matters to you? What matters to you is like a play. We are seeing what is going on. <laughs> are you preparing your soul? Are you preparing yourself for the coming of the Lord? It may look like play, but with what is going on right now, those who are saved, those who are under the shadow of Almighty God, those who God is protecting, those who are under the wings of the Lord, those who are filled with the Spirit, the Bible says that a carnal minded person can never, no matter what you tell the person, if you like, break the wall, if you like, sharp from now to the end of the world. They can't understand you. Why? Because they are not in the spirit. How can they be in the spirit when they have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior? How can they be in the spirit when they are still living a sinful life? How can they be in the spirit when their life is full of iniquity? How can they be in the spirit when they have not encountered the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, which this brother here is saying that, Who am I? What will I say? If you take the Holy Ghost away from us, if God take the Holy Ghost away from us, what will I live for? If I have no Jesus in my life, hey, what will I gain? If you take the Holy Ghost, hey, Jesus, my God, my God, if you take the Holy Ghost away, what are we going to live for? It is the Holy Ghost that is leading you in this season. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that will fill you. It is the Holy Ghost that will guide you. It is the Holy Ghost that will encourage you. It is the Holy Ghost that will give you inner peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the word give. Give it I unto thee. I have given you my peace. The peace that passeth all understanding of man. The peace of God. If you have not come to that place where the peace of God is what you are enjoying. Whether it is good. There is this peace of God that passeth all understanding. That will make things, you know. Even in the midst of pain. In the midst of adversary. The peace of God will be your, 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 your strength. Will be your hope. By the grace of God, I have been through a lot of things in my life. I have been through a lot of things in my life. Challenges of life, trials of life from Africa, even to here in the UK. Every day we live by faith. 
We live by faith. We see challenges every day, trials every day. But what can make us overcome those things? It is our faith in God. Our relationship in God. Our communion with God. Our preference. Who we have made preference of our life. He is all that matters. He should be all that should matter to man. Because he is our maker. He is our creator. He should be our mentor. But today what is happening? Many has deserted their first love. The Bible made us to know that God first loved us. Even before we did. It is because of the love God has for us. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for you and I. To wipe away our sins. To redeem us. To buy us with his precious blood. Who can donate his life for another? It's only God who can do such. It's only God. He gave his son, the only son that he had. Jesus. And he died for the world. He died for you and I. How can you tell me that God will not be so concerned about your soul? How can you not tell me that God will not be concerned about your, your, your destiny? Even if it is prosperity that you want. How can you tell me that the God that has bought your life with a precious blood of Jesus Christ will not prosper you? How can you tell me God will, will not prosper you? God will not bless you? God will not heal you? God will not be with you? God will not you know, have mercy upon you when you call upon him? God will not save you if you call upon him? God will not, you know, will not you know, lead you? God will not be there? He will do all those things. But there is something he wants us to do. He said we should come to him. Come to me, all ye who are, are heavy laden. Those of you who are burdened in the heart, in the soul, in the mind, in everything. Say, come to me and I will give you rest. Coronavirus everywhere. Coronavirus everywhere. Coronavirus everywhere. Affliction everywhere. Problem everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world now there is problem. Can't you call yourself in order and ask yourself a question, what is going on? If rapture take place now, my worthy, can I make it? Can I make it? Can I make it? Can I? <laughs> Hell, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We need the mercy of God at this time. This is not time to be afraid, brethren. This is the time to do the right thing. And that is why I am here to tell you this afternoon that you must return to the Lord thy God. That's, that is the solution to every affliction of life. That is the solution. Return to the Lord thy God now that you have the, 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 the privilege. Return to the Lord thy God. One time, I have not been coming to Facebook often, yes, but at least you'll be seeing my, my posts. I told you people that I did not answer the call of God for entertainment. And I mean it. It is true that I'm somebody that I like to, to smile. I like to laugh. Laugh is, what is, is part of what makes me, it what gives me joy. Those who know me very well from all those, they will know, will know that I'm, I'm the smiling type. Type. I like laughing, I like, I like hugging, I like, she, you know, that is me. It gives me joy. Even sometimes, I want to hold myself. I don't want to hug, but before you know it, oh, good afternoon, brother, oh, good afternoon, sister, that is me. So, even if I'm, sometimes if I'm talking or laughing or looking somehow, I am serious about it, too. that is my nature. I did not answer the call of God for entertainment. Look. I did not answer the call of God to entertain myself, me that is sitting here now. I don't entertain the call of this call of God. I don't I don't use it to entertain myself, like entertaining myself, like meaning pleasing myself with it, you know. 
I don't use it to entertain my family. You see my family? My family, meaning my father, mother, brothers and sisters. I don't use it to entertain anybody. Whatever the Lord is telling me, whatever he is telling me about anybody anywhere, about any city anywhere, about any nation anywhere, about any gathering anywhere, that's how I will say it too. I will not hide it. Except he didn't tell me. Except he has not told me anything to say. If he tell me to say something, I will say it. When, when the battle come out, he, I will tell him, Father, you, you, I'm sure you are the one who told me to say this. And now, I have said this thing now. It looks like it's causing problem. It's time for you to go and answer them. It's time for you to go and answer. And he will. That is why servants of God must hear very clearly. When the Lord is saying and when the Lord is not saying. And that's one thing about me. I don't say anything to make anybody happy. I want to, make, I want to say so that he will. That is not it. Any word that is coming for any service for any day. That is what we will hear. The Bible, the Bible said that the word of God is for correction. It's for rebuke. It's for edifying. It's for all those things. That is what the word of God is made up of. Correcting us, rebuking us, edifying us, you know, canceling us, molding us into a better person. The word of God is not for us to hear and go back and be clapping and be jumping and be using it to do whatever we want and whatever we don't want. That is not what the hour we, we are now, self, is not even is not even the in fact, if God can open people's eye. Sometimes I in this man, it's only my husband that will, that will explain what I'm going through in this house. Not that I'm going through any pain or whatever. I am praying, I am studying, I'm, I am, you know, having relationship with God. I am making some certain, you know, some, that sometimes you just have to be, you just have to, you just have to be yourself and have some kind of communion with, you, with God. I am telling you the truth. Honestly speaking, you don't need to please everybody. You don't need to make things look like whatever. You don't need to show yourself to. You don't need to. You and God knows what they are doing. That's why it's called personal relationship. Personal journey. Personal journey. Even as much as it is personal journey, I am not condemning that people should not go to church or people, or people should not have a, a garden where they meet or fellowship. No. After that, do you, do you still have that communion, the relationship with God? Do you still hear from God? Does God still speak to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? That is what we are talking about. A day shall come. It is not that 20,000 capacity church you are going that will save you. Oh, I belong to my church. My pastor is a well-known pastor in the whole world. That's not what is going to save you. Uh, my church, we have plenty of members. That is not what we are talking about. You could be going to a church where there are 20,000 capacity. And this year, the Spirit of God is not there. And you can be having your relationship with God. That's why it's good to pray. Pray that the Lord will show you where you will be, you'll be fellowshipping. Fellowshipping together is biblical. Because the word of God said we should not, say, we should not despise the, you know, the garden of the saints. We shouldn't despise the garden of the saints. Meaning we should be gathering. Meaning we should be, you know, hallelujah. Gather in the presence of God. Pray. Seek his word. Now we have gathered here now. I am I'm here now to tell us something that it is very important. The Lord is telling you now to come back to him. You know, my message is almost like the same thing every day. It's, it's almost like, in fact, I, I have been telling us, and I will continue to tell us, any message that is outside correcting you, warning you, telling you the mind of God, telling you about the, the judgment that is about to come. I don't know how many of you that remembered my message one time I was, I, was, I, I, have, I, have, I have preached, uh, you know, on a topic that says the judgment rain is about to fall. If you have not listened to it, go back. Go that scroll down, scroll down. I have a lot of messages I've done on you on social media. Scroll down and down, and you see it. The judgment train. In fact, when you when you listen to that message itself, you will see that is corresponding even to what is happening in the world of today. 
the rain is about to fall. The rain is about to fall. It was like warning. God is warning us. It's been a long time he's been warning us, telling us things, reminding us, correcting us. But everybody is busy. We are too big to listen to God. We are too big to listen to servants of God. People like us, who even hear from ourselves. You know, when the people don't even like to hear truth about the gospel. But they want to be hearing deceive. They, you will see them gather where they will fake miracles, fake all sorts of things. To manipulate your brain. To make you, the lesser you see, the more you see, the lesser you see. Or how, how are they putting it? All those things cannot save you. What will save you is the pure word of God. The Bible says, for you and I shall know the truth. And the truth that you and I know will set us free from iniquity. Will set us free from living life. You know, living life that is not the life of God. From living life anyhow. We need the truth. You need to hear the truth. You need to abide by the truth. You need to come back to the Lord your God right now. I will repeat again. The revelation I had many years ago. I will repeat it again. The word of God said, For God cannot do anything without showing his prophets. And the Bible said, The eyes of the Lord is upon the earth. It goes through and to and fro, looking at every corner of the world. Who are you deceiving? Who am I deceiving right now if I'm deceiving anybody? The Lord is watching me. The Lord is watching you. If I am deceiving you, the Lord is watching me. The Lord is watching you wherever you are. The Lord is seeing you. He's seeing you like this as he sits in the heavenlies. He's watching, he's, he's seeing everybody. And sometimes you can be where you are, you think that God is not seeing you. God will show you to somebody. As I'm here, the Lord has shown me to people, show people to me severally. Sometimes God will open my eyes and show me somebody somewhere, what the person is doing, what is happening in the person's life, and then tell me what to do. And then I will do it. Sometimes I will just laugh at it. I will just laugh and smile. Because God shows us some things so that we can be aware of what is going on around us. We can be aware of what is going on around our, our vicinity. Around, you know, it, it makes us to even know that God, this God is a mystery. And what is mystery? Mystery is something you cannot define. Something you don't know the, 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 the origin. Something you don't know the foundation. Something you can't describe. That is who God is. Our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. He doesn't reason the way we reason. He doesn't think the way we think. God does not do that. He is God all by himself. And no man can take his glory. No man can take his glory. No man can take the glory of God in this whole world and in the world to come. No man can take it. People who try to take the glory of God, they saw the consequence. They saw the repercussion. They saw it. Beloved, I am here this afternoon to tell you, come back to God. Return to the Lord thy God now before situation gets out of hand. Because he's going there. He's going there if you don't listen to him now. Situation will, it will be worse than what we are seeing now. Coronavirus is shutting down nations now. Coronavirus is shutting down shops. Yesterday I went to, uh, uh, is it yesterday? Yes. I did some shopping uh, yes, uh, day before yesterday and yesterday. In fact, I was, oh, Jesus Christ. Hey. As I was shopping, I said, God, hmm. this thing is like play, 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 play. It's like joke. It's like joke. Any shop you come, most of the shop, the counter empty. Nothing. Coronavirus is shutting down nations, embassies, businesses are still. So many things are happening. And the worst of it, people are dying. People are dying. Are you better than the people that have died through this coronavirus? 
Are you better than them? Are you more holier than them? No. The answer is no. Are you better than them? You are not better than them in any way. The Bible says, for all men are equal before the eyes of God. All men are what? Equal. But what separates us and makes all different is our relationship with God. Our relationship with God. It, was, it is what creates the boundary. Like he has always told us that his ears are not too short, that all his hands shorten, that he cannot hear our prayer. But our iniquity has put separation between us and him. That's what the word of God says. Meaning that it is only when you begin to live a sinful life that you, are, you have now made yourself an enemy of God. God does not hate anybody. God loves you just like as he loved me. He loves everybody. I'm not too special. In fact, there could be, there could be people who are even more special than me in the, hands of, in, the, in, the, in the hands of God. Because it's like level. It's like rank. Yes. It's like rank. So, you need to come now hold the hands of God. And realize. <laughs> Jesus. You are all that matters. Oh my God. This song then, eh? Kai, Jesus. In front of my melody, you are all the matters. Hmm. I'm making for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all the matters. Come on. God matters. You have to come to that point. Where it is only God that you have. Have you come to that point in your life? Where is only God that you have? If you have not come to that point, you have not started. You are all that matters. Oh, way, oh, way. You are all that matters. God is all that matters in the situation we are facing now in the world. Hmm. It's God that matters and it's Him that should matter now if we have brain, if we have sense. I can't say it more than the way I'm saying it. I can't come to your house now and put, to, and put rope on your neck, on your waist and say, I'm be dragging you. You must do what matters now. He must, he must force, he must, no. God said, I have set before thee, this day, life and death in Deuteronomy. The word of God said, I have set before thee, this day, life and death. I have set before thee, this day, life and death. Meaning that you should choose which one that is, is better for you. But he now said, I encourage you. To choose life so that you may live. Come on. That live meaning so that you can have eternal life. So that you can have this life after this world. There's another life after this world. A place that the saints will go and, and rejoice. And the Bible says there's no weeping there. No sorrow there. No crying there. No weeping there. No coronavirus there. No uh, Ebola. No, this one hates me. You can't hate anybody in the kingdom. No, you do like this. You are not, no. No fault finding. Not, uh, no, nothing like that. You can, you can find in the kingdom of God. That place is a place of jubilee. A place of happiness. A place of everlasting joy. Hmm. Oh my God. How I wish that God can open some people's eyes. My sister. My brother, please, I'm, I'm begging you in the name of God. Begin to pray some prayer that God should show you even a glimpse of the kingdom. In fact, pray that God should show you a glimpse of himself. A glimpse of himself. This song, I don't joke with this song. This song, you are all that matters. Hmm. Reason with that song very well. If you had somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit, you know that this song is not ordinary. Very prophetic. 
so willing and healing in this song you see so beloved make room for two in your life now that's what the lord is saying make room for two and that two is who you and your god because whether you believe it or not a day is coming when only you shall stand before the judgment throne of god and give account of your life the bible says we shall all give account of our life on how we spend it before the lord your boyfriend cannot stand with you on the judgment day your husband that loves you so much can't on that day now my husband will stand i may not even know himself he will stand on his own i'll stand on my own and give account of my life my children will stand on their own and give account of their life everybody will stand on their own and give account of their life what about when it comes to that level? Have you imagined when a man dies, everybody follows them to the grave? Everybody cry, 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 hey, hey, whoa, hey, hey. And at the end of the day, they put the person in the grave. Everybody goes back. Have you seen whoever goes with the person in the grave? Nobody. The person is left alone there with whatever he has committed in the world. Beloved, the Lord is telling you and I to come back to Him. That is the essence of my coming to this life today. Oh. Come back to the Lord thy God, all Israel. The day I heard this word, I was in my house here. And uh, I was studying the word of God and that thing triggers me. I know how the Lord moved me. I know how He used me. And I put it in as a message. Go to my wall. If you want to confirm what I'm saying, go to my wall. You see it. <laughs> and the, oh my God, what is going on in the realm of the spirit? Sometimes I will weep in this my house. I will cry. I say, God, have mercy upon this generation. Go back to the Lord thy God, all Israel. Go back to the Lord thy God. Go back to the Lord thy God. Now that you can find him, go back to the Lord thy God. Now that you can find his mercy, go back to the Lord thy God. Now you can find forgiveness. Go back to him. Go on your knees right now. We will go in, I will share one or two scriptures with you so that you know that I am not talking my own word. I am not um, telling you from, I don't know how to put it. It is the word of the Lord. It is what he wants you and I to do right now. God wants nations to come back to him. God wants villages, cities, streets, individuals to come back to him. God wants kings to come back to him. He wants princes and princesses. Prince and princesses to come back to him. He wants leaders to come back to him. He wants children to come back to him. He wants everybody to come back to him. That is what he wants us to do right now. Why? Because it is him that matters now. As it is. Whether we like it or not, it is God that matters now. Then if you now choose that it is not God who matters, then you are on your low alone. To your tent... All Israel. The word of God is complete too. When you hear to your tent, all Israel, what do you think it means? To your tent, all Israel. Meaning that you should stand on your own. Meaning that you 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 know you've been rejected. Meaning that you are not following instruction. Meaning that you are just on your own. Anyone that is said to to your tent, all Israel, you should know that there is problem. The person should quickly begin to re readjust. Begin to think of what is that thing that he has done that he need to redo. He need to, you know, you know, uh, uh, repent from. May we not be told to your tent, all Israel. May nothing of such come our way. May we not experience the anger of God. Because the anger of God, no man can stand it too. Now, let me come back. Let me just... Listen to me, somebody. <clears throat> I 
in 2012, 11, 12, thereabout. I'm repeating this revelation now. I'm repeating this revelation now. Hold on one minute, please. Hello? My dear no please, because can you call me back later? I'm, I'm live now, please. Hello, okay, I'll call you back later, please. So, in that 2012, 11, 12, thereabout, you know, I was in the revelation. I was in the revelation. The Bible says, God cannot do anything without showing his prophets. Prophets are people, servants of God are people the Lord, you know, has chosen, commissioned to, you know, some particular assignments in the kingdom. And God shows them things that happen. God shows them things that will happen. God speaks to them. God uses them to, to you know, uh, shepherd the sheep, you know, lead them, direct them, correct them. Like in the days of Jesus, the Bible says Jesus had 12 disciples. He had people who followed him, who, who is listening to him, who is learning from him. Who were with him going city to city and preaching the word of God. And in that year, I was in that revelation. And most of you who have been following me online, you will know that I have, in some of my messages, I've mentioned it. I've mentioned this thing, this revelation now. Time with that number, I've mentioned it. When matter look like matter, you, 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 you mention what looks like what you are saying. And to confirm revelation, to confirm some things. So in that year, I was in that revelation. And the Spirit of the Lord took me in, into a higher, you know, just took me up and hung me in the air. And I was in the, God wants to show me the state of the world. So I was, as I was in that air, I can see that there is a lot of problem. Fight, quarrel, people were buying things, marketing, selling, transacting, you know, connecting like connection today. People's problem today now is connection. Connection, fighting, marrying, giving birth, traveling, so many things are happening. Problem. A plane crash. Flo uh, uh, flood, earthquake, earthquake. Uh -uh. In fact, I saw so many things. God was just showing me. I saw a lot of things. Plane crash. In fact, I would just see a plane like this coming, they would crash. Cra! I would say, God. So many things. My brothers and my sisters, it's not a joke. And all of a sudden, People start telling themselves, oh, there is no safety anywhere. You know, there is no safety here. I'm going to so 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 place to find safety. I'm traveling to Europe. Europe, Europe is what I heard, you know, mostly in that revelation. People want to go to Europe. People want to go to Europe. They want to say there hey, is Europe. That is where safety is now. There is no safety here. There is no safety there. People in the Europe too are saying they are going to so 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 area. That is where safety is. That is where safety is. In that revelation, and from that point, and I started shouting, Repent, repent, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Repent, for there is no safety anywhere but except in Christ Jesus. I have said this in several times. Those of you who know me very well, you will know, you will know that I've been saying this, this revelation, I've been saying it, I've been saying it. Repent, there is no safety anywhere but except in Christ Jesus. Beloved, after that revelation in that 2011, huh? countdown, what has been happening? 2012, 2013, 14, didn't you see what, what is happening? Didn't you, haven't you experienced plane crash, problems, a lot of things? God may have also been showing it to other prophets so. I'm not saying that I'm only the one now God is using. Before some people will come and swallow me up and say, is she, is she claiming that she's only the one God is showing things? I know that there are people, some of you like that, some ministers of God and some, some people. That is not what I'm here to claim. I'm not here to claim that. 
And that is if that if that is what you think you think of, that let it be your problem. But I am telling you what the Lord has, has shown me. That is happening today. In fact, this one now is even the <laughs> Oh my God. Problem everywhere. And I was shouting, repent. There is no safety anywhere. But except in Christ Jesus, come back to God. And after that, you know, my phone rang. Somebody woke me up. And who woke me up that day was Sister Belinda. Sister Belinda, wherever she is now, if she will tell herself the truth, she will confirm what I'm saying. She called me. She was the one that called me early that morning because we have program. We have a conference. We have program we are organizing. She's one of the, the you know, workers then. She, you know, she, she was one of, the, you know, one of our teams that time. So she called me for something. Maybe she wanted to relate with me about something. She called me. You know, I was like, oh my God. When I woke up, I was weeping. I was in tears. I was crying. So that Sister Benda was the person that first called me that day. So when she called me, she heard me crying. They cried, my sister, my brother. There are some things the Lord will show you. You will not hold your tears. You will cry like a baby. You will cry like a child. You will cry, you will weep. I was crying and she was like, oh, evangelist, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I told her. She was like, oh, it's well, oh, huh, this world, God will help us. Only God will save us. So it's and that. She was consoling me. It's okay, stop crying. Don't worry. God will take care of everything. God will do it. You know? So she now told me the reason why she was calling me. And that was it. And I remembered when I came to fellowship, I, I, I also shared it, the, the revelation. And I've been sharing this revelation because it's like a warning. Anytime I'm ministering like this, Holy Spirit will bring it up in one way or the other. I will share it. What is happening now? Anybody, any, anybody now, me and I talk now on phone from Africa now, you tell me, I am coming to Europe. Problem here, problem there. We that is in the Europe, are we safe? That is the question now. Are we safe? We are, nobody is safe anywhere. Nobody is safe anywhere. There is no security anywhere, but except in Christ Jesus. If you hide yourself under the umbrella of the Lord, you will have divine protection. I am not saying that our governments are not trying. I am not saying that our, our leaders are not trying. Our leaders are trying. They are doing the right thing. But there is this divine protection that man cannot give to man. Divine protection. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, have you ever seen yourself in a plane crash where one person survived? That is the divine protection we are talking about. It is not that the rest, God will hate them. You see people flying in the plane and something happened. You hear that only one person survived from this plane crash. What a miracle. That person might be a sinner. That person that survived it, it means God has, in, has the person in use. God wants to use that person. God wants to use him to bring glory to himself. Have you ever seen where something happened to people and it doesn't happen to you? Why? It is because you know who you believe in. And it is not that you're, it's not like you are better than the people that fall victim of that thing. No. Are we getting me? So today, anybody you talk to now, everybody want to come to Europe. When, when, when we talk, I will say, God, and God will be reminding me of that revelation. Exactly. People that are in Europe too now are looking for a way to do themselves. A lot of consideration of the situation of this. You see people sitting there, what do I do in this situation? Do I relocate? Do I move to Canada? So many people have moved to Canada. So many people have moved to America. So many people have moved to America and from America come back to England again. A lot of moving and moving and moving around. Move up, move down, that is not the issue. The issue is move your life into Christ. Move your life, move your soul, move your being. Move everything into the hand of God and say, God, you are all that matters to me now. If it is not God who matters to you, I wonder what, what will matter to you. Because a day is coming 
when everything will fail man, but the word of God will stand before you that day. Another reminder. On the 17th, a sister called me, Sister Ogo, Sister Ogo, Sister Ogo, I will not hide your name. I think I saw you online here now. Sister Ogo called me. She said, Auntie, she said, she said, good afternoon. She said, it's been a long time, oh. She said, it's been a long time, oh. I saw you. You said, you've not been coming on life. Hope you are said I'm fine, oh, by the grace of God. All things is working together for good to them that love God and to them that he has called according to his purpose. I said, all is going on well. She said, Evangelist, I want to remind you something. I don't know whether, you know, whether you still remember this revelation. She said, you remember when we are in our second branch in a uh, Union Street. Yes, that's our Union Street branch that time. You remember when we were there? She said, one day we came to fellowship and uh, you were ministering, and all of a sudden, you you know, you, you, people that know me know how God used to use me. Know how we, she said, she said all of a sudden that, you know, you start weeping. You say the Lord is showing you something right now. That you say the Lord is showing you something right now. And you said the thing look like, you can see something like a ball. Something like in a round cycle, in a round, you know, in form of ball. And the thing is in the air. The thing is hovering. And now the thing has stood in a particular country where I cannot even I can I can't see the name of the country, but the, you said the thing is 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 hanging on on a, in a particular country. Is is you said is is Europe or not African country Europe, you know? Say the thing is there, but all of a sudden the thing now burst, the thing burst, and begin to kill people. People begin to die. People begin to die. And as, as, as people are dying, the thing starts spreading to all other nations of the world, countries of the world, that the thing starts spreading. And she told me, she said, Evangelist, that thing is this coronavirus. She said, because I remember that your prophecy, and when I Google, when she said she, she now check uh, this coronavirus in here. She said it's, it's in the ramp form, exactly the way God show me. Where is the country now that the coronavirus has burst into? China. China. The coronavirus burst there. Look at how what is happening in China. Look at how the, the, the thing is spreading and spreading and spreading. And when she was telling me that, when she was saying it, and I began to remember. And I began to remember. And now later I say, and I, and now, when I now look at uh, the coronavirus, uh, this thing through through, it's like a, it's only a form of. In fact, this God is so wonderful. This God, eh, people should learn to fear God. People should learn to hold on to the Word of God. People should stop, should stop taking the Word of God for granted. People should stop taking the Word of God for granted. People should learn to trust the Word of God, abide in the Word of God. Live by the word of God every day. Because the word of God cannot lie. It cannot lie. When I look at, when I now look at coronavirus picture, it was exactly what the Lord, you know, was showing me. Exactly. The, the virus. I say, God, that they are marvel. A marvel. A marvel. A marvel. And the Lord is telling us, return to the Lord thy God. He's just the one in return. Look at, look at Kenya. Look at Kenya and Uganda. What before Uganda? Is it not Lucas? Lucas. Look at, look at Lucas. Lucas. The Bible says something about Lucas. When, when God sent Lucas to the children of disobedient, when they disobeyed God in some certain thing, and, they, and God said they would send Lucas to destroy their famine, to cause famine in their, in their land. And he did it. Look at, if you look at Uganda now, I saw the picture of their farm where, in fact, if you see the Lucas, eh, the way they are running in millions, in thousands on the floor. And I begin to imagine the mystery behind the power of God. 
when the Lord will come with any weapon, no weapon can quench the, the weapon of God. It's just that our God is a merciful God. He does not come on time. He is a merciful God. He will keep watching you. He will keep giving you plenty of time. He will keep allowing you to, you know, live that life and keep warning you as well. But the day he will say no, his wrath and his anger, no man can stand. No man can stand, I'm telling you. Nobody can stand the anger and the wrath of God. When the anger of God is upon a man, no anointing no, can deliver it. No pastor, no evangelist, no sister, brother, anything can deliver the person. No. It is the mercy of God that can deliver the person if the person is willing to allow God to break him or her. What does it mean to break somebody? To bring you to humility, where you humble yourself and say, Father, it's not me, but you. It's not me anymore, but you. And God knows when you are humble. It's not all this perfidity talk. I am a boy again. I'm a child of God. I go here to go to church. We do all sorts of things. We use the name of God to, for mockery. That's why God is angry now. Because a lot of things are going on. It's going on. People taking the name of God for granted. People using the name of God to make caricature. This woman jump up and heal. He heal now. He heal now. Look at the hand. He heal. He heal. And meanwhile, you know that in your heart it's not you who did it. What a nonsense. How can people be going that far? Using the name of God to do miracle that you know. It's not. It is when the Spirit of God has left them. It is when the Lord has not called them for what they are doing. That's why... Everybody must return to the Lord thy God. Whether you are a man of God, whether you are an individual, whether you are a government, whether you are whoever, return to the Lord thy God now. And, and stop deceiving people. Before it's too late. Stop deceiving yourself and deceiving others. Before it's too late. Before it's too late. Because a day is coming. When you give account of your life, you give account of how you spend it. Lovelyn, I will not be there. When I will stand and give account of my life too before God, you will not be there. Oh. I won't be there. Nobody will wall up. Everybody will stand individually and answer. And so therefore, the Lord is calling you today to return to Him and He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will protect you. He will save you. From every affliction. Why you keep applying. The necessary. Physical health. You know requirement. That is required of you to do. Yes. The Bible said. God, the, the word of God told us that. He wish above all things. Who is calling me again? He wish above all things. That we prosper. And be in good health. Even as our soul prospered. That he wish above all things. That we prosper. And be in good health, even as our soul prospered. Meaning that God wants us to, to live healthy. He wants you to protect yourself. Live healthy. You cannot come and live yourself now. And, and vehicle is coming. Vehicle is coming. You say, oh, oh, I have God in heaven. Oh, I have God in heaven. And you throw yourself in the main road. And tell me how the car will not hit you. And blow off your brain. So it, that one is like you are putting God into test. That one is not, is not what God is saying. So now as it is now with the, with the issue of this coronavirus, you have to apply the health rules. Wash your hands as they say. Like I tell people, people will say, wash your hands, wash your hands. I, 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 will tell, I will tell myself, wash your hands, is it today? Is it because of coronavirus? We hope we wash your hands start from coronavirus now. Apart from coronavirus, don't you, don't you know you wash your hand because of dirty and the rest of them? Because of uh, coronavirus now. Nah. We we, everybody is washing hand, washing hand. Washing hand is something that is a necessity in the life of any man who is neat. If you are living a neat life, you are a neat person. There are some things that will irritate you. 
There are some things you can't even want to see in your, around your house. You keep your house clean. You wash your clothes, you, you, you shower well, you look good, you clean, even wherever you are, you clean your, your, your plates clean, your kitchen clean, house clean, everywhere clean. That is my protocol. It's not because of coronavirus now. I don't start doing hygiene because of coronavirus. I do, I do hygiene because it's something I'm used to. It's something I'm used to. So, to those of you who are not used to it, keep doing it. Why you keep praying to your God? Why you keep believing God, you know, for divine protection? And he will not fail to protect us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, please, I will drop you this scripture. I will drop you this scripture, and I can read even one of it. In your own quiet time, go back to God in his word. Read it yourself. Meditate on it and allow the Holy Spirit himself to minister to you. It's the Holy Spirit that will make you understand this thing I'm talking about. It's the Holy Spirit that will make you understand it. It's the Holy Spirit. Hmm. In fact, there is a message itself. The Lord gave me to one time concerning this... this um, Concerning um, where where is this uh, this state uh, in uh, in Nigeria in in Anambra state? Where is that? Uh, hmm. Oh God! I wrote it somewhere. I wrote it somewhere in my see in my Bible. I just wrote it somewhere. It's a message. Sometimes God will tell me something. God will show me things and tell me things. You know. Sometimes I will not say it. Sometimes I will not, I will not, you know, but I will see the thing happen. In a way, that was why when God showed me something, something like this, and want me to say it, because I have seen, I have known, I have, I have seen the warning, the, 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 you know, the, the caution, what I've been through as a result of that. We are everybody grow in the Lord gradually. Sometimes God will show you some countries. Fear will not even let you to say it. But now I've learned to say anything God is telling me to say, talk, do by the grace of God, not by my own power. Hey, Kedeti, what is that? That, is, that name of the that city is coming up. It's in Nambra State. God, God show me something about that land. That has to do with you know, uh, tradition, stuff and stuff and stuff. And the Lord was saying, you know, how he's going to invest his anger if, they, if the chiefs of that, uh, yeah, if they don't come back to him. And there's a lot of things that God show me, you know. And as, there, 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 there is, a, is a time I heard something about similar thing like that, about that particular city in Anambra State. Beloved, we need to come back to God. This is not a joke. We need to come back to God right, right now. Without wasting time. If you have your Bible there, I want us to go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea 14, verse 1. Let us go there. The Word of God cannot lie. This, this Bible here is not my own. I'm not the one who, who, who wrote the Bible. I'm not the manufacturer of the Scripture. I want us to go there quickly. But where you will get it more clearly is um, in um, Jeremiah and uh, 1 Samuel 2. Hosea again, 14, 1 to 9. Now the Bible said in Hosea, Hosea 14 from verse 1, it said, O Israel, you and I, nations of the world, continents of the world, we are the Israel of the Lord, because we are his, you know, Creator, and he is our creator. He said, O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled. You and I have stumbled. Nations have stumbled. Cities have stumbled. Individuals have stumbled. For you have stumbled because of your iniquity. What is iniquity? Iniquity is sin. Anything that is not good is sin before God. Anything that is not good, that thing that you know you are doing in your, in you do, that you know this thing is not good, 
the simplest thing. And he said, take words with you. Take words. Take this word I'm telling you today now. Take this word with you. Say, take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, when you return, say to the Lord that you have returned to. Take away all iniquity from me. Receive us graciously. This should be the cry of nations now. This should be the cry of individuals now. This should be the cry of families, congregations, everywhere. He said, return. 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 He said, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Verse 3 says, Assyria shall not save us. Assyria shall not save us. Meaning, that Assyria there now, let it represent that thing you know you are doing. That thing you know within yourself that you are doing that is not good before you. And the Lord is saying that that thing you, and, 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 you know, indulge with cannot save you. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our God, for in you the fatherless finds mercy. Tell God all these things. Father, in you the fatherless find mercy. We can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves but you. And for said, I will heal their backsliding. This is when God is responding now. He's telling you that. He said, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned away from him. I will be like the I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall grow like the lily and uh, gladden his root like Lebanon. And six said, His branches shall spread, his beauty shall be like an olive tree, and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. God is telling you to return in this thing that is happening now. is is warning. Meaning that if nations do not return, if individuals do not return, the worse than this may still happen, which we don't know what it is about. Hallelujah. And he said, they shall be received like grain. God is calling you that come back. I will receive you. Like I told you, the word of God is not for condemnation. I am not here to condemn you. I am not here to, to judge you of your sin. I am only here to remind you of the promises of God. The word of God, which is the word of hope. Not the word of rejection. Because God has not rejected anybody. He has not condemned anybody. The Bible says, for this reason, Christ has come to save the world. But not to condemn the world. He has, his, his father sent him to do what? To save the world. But not to condemn you. Hallelujah. And he said, they shall, receive, they shall be received like grain and grow like a wine. Their scent shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, who is Ephraim? I am the Ephraim. You are the Ephraim. You are the Ephraim of your time now. I am the Ephraim of my time. Based on what we have you know, done, based on our humility, returning back to God, when God now shows us his power, his mercy, you shall one day in your life and say, Oh, thank God I came back to God. Oh. Thank God I did this. Thank God this nation submitted to God. Thank God this country returned back to God. That shall be our testimony. Hallelujah. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do anymore with idol? Come on. Test and see that the Lord is good. Test and see that the Lord is good. Ephraim will say it. What have I to do with I do anymore in my life? They say when you test two things, you know which one is good. I've told you people that me too, I was once a sinner. Sinner of sinner half category. We have all of us now, we have what we are doing now that, that represents sin in our life. Most of you now, your sin is, is gossip. Gossip is your own sin. You sit down, you gossip people. Mr. A will pass. Look at her. She walks like this. She doesn't walk straight. Her clothes is not ironed properly. She's smelling. Blah, blah, blah. 
Look at, look at, look at. You gossip, you gossip, you gossip. There are some people, gossip is their own problem. It's their own sin. There are some people, lying is their own sin. Any little thing. The way they will lie, self, the way they will lie, you may even say, I'm not sure that this, this person did this thing. No. I mean, why? She is the one. Why? Because she has gotten PhD in lying with, with the corny pretense. Sometimes they can cry, too, they can weep. You, you, then you become more confused. Say, oh, I'm not sure that this, this person did this. Let me tell you. But if you have inner eyes, discernment spirit, you know that that person is lying. There are some people, their own sin is picking, picking. Anywhere they go, something must disappear. Anywhere they go, money must lost. One thing must disappear. Stealing. Some people, they have this spirit of commotion, division. Anywhere they go, they, div they put problem. They will come to a peaceful marriage now. Before they will live there, they will cause problem. They don't care. They will put problem between husband and wife. They will fabricate all sorts. They will lie, 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 full grand. That is their own sin. Some people, their own is, is um, using pen to dupe people in the office. They use pen to undo people's destiny. Some people, is taking what belongs to somebody by force. You know that that portion of land is not your own. No? You are dragging it. You will send the Mr. A, go and be dragging that land. Say it's your own, blah, blah, blah. The confusion. And you know that that land is not your own. That property is not your own. That investment is not your own, but you want to claim it. In the, day, in the broad daylight, koro koro like this, you don't care. You don't even have conscience. You don't have sympathy to your fellow human being. You want to corner people's business. You want to corner people's uh, investment. You want to, that is people's own. Some people, their own is fornication. They can't do without it. Fornication, you know, they fall into fornication. They fall into sin. We, that, that is the category where I belong to. That was my sin then. Because me now, you cannot find me now where you find me coming to start gossiping somebody, start lying against somebody. I cannot follow you to lie against anybody as I'm here. In fact, if you talk anything that I can't lie against anybody, no matter. As it is, I'm going to say it as it is. Whether you believe me or not, I don't. I have somebody who will fight for me and it's God. That has been my belief right from my childhood. Even when I was still a sinner self. When something, they will call me, they say, when she comes out, she will say the truth. I will say the truth as it is. I don't care. I cannot lie against you. I can't cook anything against you. I can't fabricate. My sin that time is his boyfriend. I, yes, I will date boyfriend. <laughs> that is it. That was my sin. So that could be your own sin today now. But God delivered me out of it. When God began to speak to me, when the word of God began to sink into my spirit, when I begin to reason through through this God, you know, when I be, and I gave my life to Jesus, that spirit disappeared. Some of you may be saying, "Oh, you are saying it because you are married now. You are married. You have a husband. You can make love with your husband anytime you want." My sister, hear me. I gave my life to Jesus when I was single. I started this ministry when I was single. Yes, I was a minister of the gospel. When I was single, I was single and doing the work of God in holiness and in righteousness. It will, must come to a point where would you, would you, your, you would tell yourself the truth that no, I have to tell myself the truth. Enough is enough. And that is it. I don't know the sin that you are, you, are, you are into today. The Lord is telling you, come back. Return to the Lord thy God now that you can find him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Bible says, Ephraim shall say, What have I to do with idols anymore? I have heard and observed him. Who? You have heard about who? You have heard about God. And you have observed. That is what I want somebody to do now. After this message, sit yourself down. 
Who have you heard about today, about God? Look at what is going on in the world of today. Who you've heard about him. Observe things for yourself. Said, I've heard and observed him. I am like a green uh, cypress, cypress tree. Your fruit is found in me. Look at Ephraim is now praising himself. Oh, look at me. I am now a new person. Just like Loveline. When I was in the world, in those days I was doing boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And ah, yes, when they, when I get money, I, I, I buy better cream. I, I buy latest clothes. Late designers, correct. I'm one of those that are talk, talk the design. Whatever fashion that is on board, I'm one of them. I have told you that there is a boutique in those states called Ebano. When Ebano opened his boutique, when he opened his boutique, there was no name on top of that boutique. No name. He opened it, but the business was moving. When I dress like this and come out, they will be hailing me. Ebano one. Ebano one. It is because of how I look. I posh. Not now that I, I'm not beautiful anymore. Posh. See me. Classic babe. You won't try. Correct, correct. Latest. They will hear me. Ebano. Ebano. One day Ebano told me, he said, he said, I'm going to you. This Ebano, I'm calling you. He said, Ebano, I will write on this my boutique. That was how he now wrote his boutique. Ebano. Ebano. Hey God. Uh... My dear. Ebano. Namibia Ebano. Na fashion. They hear me. But let me tell you. Fashion does not save me. Fashion does not save me. It's like I was even wandering away. Away from my destiny. Away from where God wants me to be. But the moment I realize who I am in Christ. There is something I want you to know. There is who you are in the world. And who you are in Christ. Who are you now today? Are you who you are in Christ? Or who you are in the world? If you are still who you are in the world. Come back to the word of God. Come and reckon with God. So that he can make you a new person. So you can begin to talk like Ephraim today. Ephraim who encountered the word of God. Ephraim who heard the word of God through Hosea. And began to run with it. Ephraim now said that he's like a tree. That his fruit is that is the fruit of God is found in him. The fruit of God needs to be found in you so that you can manifest the full glory of God in you. Hallelujah. And verse 9 said, Who is wise? In this message today, now who is wise among you? Who is wise now? Who is wise? Let him understand these things. We need to understand that we are in the end time. We need to understand that we are in the last days. I've been saying this thing. Not, that's why sometimes I say, what, what am I coming to say now that I've not said before? The word of God remains the same. I have a lot of messages that you can go and listen to. Go to YouTube. Go to my wall on Facebook. Scroll. Just, you will see a lot of videos, a lot of live messages on camp table that are edifying. If truly is Christ you are looking for. If truly is not where they will touch you, 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 you will summon salt into hundred times you, say you are looking for. I'm not saying that God is not a miracle worker. God is a miracle because he's using me too to do miracle. So that uh, you don't see me begin to pray for people in a crusade tomorrow. And you see people falling under anointing. You say, which one is this? God is a miracle worker. Hmm. My God. His, his miracle power self. Nobody can stand it. I'm telling you, no demon can stand it. It was recorded in the scripture that Jesus healed the lame, healed the, the blind, made the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood to be whole. A lot of miracles that he did. So why would you not tell me that God is not a God of miracle? But you have to design the miracles that are from God and the ones that are not of God. The ones that are not of God will give you more problem, more headache, more issue. You'll be blindfolded. You'll remain on that, on that siege. But the, the true deliverance of God, true miracle of God, gives, free, gives divine freedom. When God delivers you from a particular thing, that deliverance will remain. If you follow the protocol, if you follow the protocol that is attached to deliverance, not all these things that people will do and then they will go back to their, 
yeah, I'll be saying this thing. People that God have healed, when you heal them, you tell them you are healed, you are made whole. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. You don't hear where Jesus say, I've healed you. Go and continue to be sinning. Go and continue to be fornicating. Go and continue to be lying. Go and continue to be saying, you have made whole. Go and sin no more. Because it is that sin, when you, are, when you don't sin again, you, you, you have blocked every loophole of illegality in your life. They won't have access into your life anymore to manipulate. And that is, he said, who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. For the ways of the Lord are right. Our ways can never be right. The ways of, sometimes government step, they make mistake. They'll be leading their citizenship astray. Look at Nigeria now. Look at a lot of countries that you can mention. When leaders cannot portray who they, who they are in the life of their citizens, it's a shame. It's a very big shame. Leaders are there to be there for the citizens. Leaders and government, they are there to put things right. They are there to make their people happy. They are there to secure the future of their people. They are there to make sure that amenities are being met. They are there to put things in place for the benefit of the poor masses and people who may be in need of it. But today, otherwise is the case. Most of the leaders, when they come on board, they want to eat. Keep for their children, 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 and children, children. Let me tell you something. I used to tell myself, you see this ministry? You see this ministry that God has called me into? This ministry, CBHIM is not for Loveline. CBHIM is not for my family. Let me tell you. Say now, nah, open to church now. Nah, every and uh, uh, is one family will come and be doing one nonsense when it is not you. The Lord is telling me to do something with you. my dear. I will show you. You will be surprised. This ministry is not for family. I'm not saying that if you want to come and fellowship, you shouldn't come. Home. But don't come and be trying doing one kind of nonsense, trying to do. In this ministry, everybody is everybody is important. Everybody matters to me. You cannot come and be taking the privilege of the father that uh, you are my in-law or you are my brother or you are my sister or you are my anybody and be intimidating anybody. It can't happen. It can't happen. It's a ministry of all. A ministry of liberty. A ministry of freedom. Hallelujah. And that is how it is. So what are we saying? Return to the Lord thy God. For your ways are not right, but the ways of the Lord is the best. And he said, the righteous walk in them, but trans, uh, transgressors stumble in them. If I say the ways of the Lord are right, the righteous walk in them and prosper, but the transgressors, they walk in them, they stumble. Who are transgressors? Transgressors are people who are against the word of God, who are rebelling against the word of God, who are still full of themselves, who are finding means to stop the work of God, to castigate the work of God, because they are not ready. That's why they are stumbling. You cannot stumble if you are ready. Somebody, I want you to be ready right now before the Lord. I want you to tell the Lord, Father, I am ready I am ready to give up anything that is not giving you glory in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at that word of God in that scripture. And if you go for that to Jeremiah 4, 1. Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah 4, verse 1. Let's read Jeremiah quickly. The word of God is very encouraging, honestly. When you read it like this, you find encouragement in the word of God. You'll be encouraged. You'll be happy. You will know what you are doing. You know? Now, Jeremiah chapter 4 from verse 1, he said, If you will return, all Israel, 
we have read what the Bible said in um, Hosea. And he said, if you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. Then you shall not what? Be moved. Coronavirus will not move you. Apart from coronavirus, that could be a situation you are going through right now. They will move you. Whatever, whatever you find yourself in will not move you. Even if rapture want to take place now, because you know who you are, and you know the God you are serving, the fear of Jesus is coming now, hellfire, hellfire, will not move you. People that they will, they will talk, tell about rapture and about hell and heaven, and they will be fighting, they will be fighting. It's because they, 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 they are not, their ways are not pure. Their ways, they are still living in sin. There's one thing or the other that is still frightening them. But if you know, if you know who you are, I'm not saying that, hey, you know, everybody, you know, we are all perfect or whatever. But at least there are some certain level you will trust yourself that, oh, you are born again. You don't need anybody to tell you, you know. You should be able to give yourself confidence that, well, God is not by my power, but by your mercy. I believe that I will make it when you come, Lord. You know, that's what I'm saying. So, that is it. He said, return to me. And I will do all those things. I will save you. You will not be moved. You will not be moved. You will not be moved. That is the promise of God. God wants us to return. And I want you to return. And as you return, the Lord will help you. And I, in the name of Jesus. If you go to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 7. 1 Samuel 7. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Put these scriptures down. In your own time, you can read it. 1 Samuel chapter 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7 from verse 3. From verse 3. He said, Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the and the you know put away the foreign gods from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. The hand of the Philistines. When the Philistines came, came against you know again come against the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Samuel, and Samuel was telling the, telling them the mind of God that if only you can return, bring back the ark of God, return, you know, humble yourself before the Lord, and the Lord will disappoint the children of uh, the, the the Philistines. And if you read further, because of time, I won't read further. Read further in your own, in your you know, in your own time. First Samuel seven, three to thirteen. Very powerful and very encouraging scripture. By the time you finish reading it, you 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 decide which who who to follow. You decide which God to hold on to. I have seen God manifested His power in a greater dimension. I have seen God walk in my life. I have seen God's power in action. And when I talk, I'm not boasting. I'm telling you what I know. I have seen God like this in a situation that is chaos. In a, that is here, when the enemy will come like a flood, the Bible says God will raise a standard against them. I've seen them severally. They will come and like say, Father, I have no power of my own, especially if it is what I don't even know about. I say, Father, I don't have power. The enemy has come against me. Fight them, raise a standard against them, and let your, your, your Holy Spirit wipe them like, wipe them off like flood. And God will do it. I'm telling you, I'm not boasting. It's some is his experience, like they used to have, you know, experience of life. I'm I'm telling you what I have experienced. I'm not telling you what I don't know about. So I have experienced the power of God. I have experienced what God can do. Hold on to the word of God. Believe it. Live by it, and you see 
that in this situation on ground right now and in the situation to come tomorrow, whether or not God will save you, God will protect us, and we shall try on in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, by the grace of God, that is the end of the message. Go back to the Lord thy God, all Israel. The Lord is warning. The Lord is telling us. The Lord is angry. The, the Lord is not happy. Couple of months, months, couple of months like this, God has been showing me a lot of revelation where he's not happy. I, I wake up about them and I say, honey, I've seen when I wake up like this. That is the way I wake up, say my husband will be asking me why. Honey, sleep now. Why are you why are you why why did you sit up? When I have some kind of revelation like this, I sit up straight. I sit up from bed, I sit up straight, and I begin to meditate. I'll be, I'll be sober. Sometimes I may leave our room. I may leave me and my husband's bed and go to somewhere else because I want to pray. I want to have communion. I want to know what is happening. I want the Lord to speak more to me. My husband will say, honey, you are not sleeping. What is it? Sleep now. Come, what do we know? Sometimes I will tell him immediately, say, look at what, look at what the Lord showing me. You know, God is not happy. Many times God has been showing me that he's not happy. I will tell my mother, say, honey, God is not happy. Oh. God is not happy. The Spirit of God is angry. He's angry. But I don't know what, what can we do. What do we know? Like that. I will just pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray like that. I will say, God, have mercy. God, please have mercy. Let me tell you. There are people who are intercessors or secret intercessors. There are people who are secret intercessors. Let me tell you now. Sometimes somebody may be praying for you because he's not calling you on the phone and say, Hello, Peter, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Don't worry. Doesn't mean that somebody is not praying for you. There are people who are secret intercessors. They are praying for nations. They are praying for individuals. I am telling you the truth. Some kind of things will just happen in your life like this. You won't even know where the prayer comes from. You may even think it's, you know, it's happening. It's happening. Somebody may be praying for you somewhere. Maybe your mother, your pastor, your sister, your fellow sister or brother in the Lord who like praying, you know. When you pray, you commit everybody in the hands of Father. Look at Sister Joy, Brother Peter, Brother Matthew. Please, wherever. Father, Father, please. So, people are crying, you know. Children of God are crying on behalf of our nations. On behalf of, in fact, do you even know what is even still holding some nations in our life? It is because the cry and weeping of some believers is touching the heart of God. If only all, all, all of us can repent. If only all of us can come back together. If only we can love ourselves and live hate. If only we can behave like human beings and reason well. If only we can treat our neighbors the way we treat ourselves. If only we can do those things. This word is, a, is in fact, you will enjoy life, I will enjoy life. It's human being that is the devil we are seeing. I've told you that, no, but no devil. I've, I've, not, I've not walked on the road at this and see devil. Human being is the devil. Human, they are the devil. They are the devil. But I pray that we will not encounter them in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you, beloved. May the Lord bless you for tuning in this afternoon with me and by the grace of God pray that God anytime the Lord just move me to come I come that's it you are all that matters you are all that matters I'll make room for two you and I Jesus you are all that matters you are all the matters. Oh, oh, oh. You are all the matters. Child of God, let's begin to worship the Lord. Father, we thank you for an hour like this. We bless you because we know you are our God. We recognize you that you are all that matters to us, God. In this situation, in this you know, trying time, 
We choose you above whatever we are experiencing now, God. Because we know you have solution to every everything. You have solution to every situation. Father, we thank you for whatever is happening. We thank you because your word says in every situation we should give you praise. And so God, we thank you. We believe you for your healing power. We, be we believe you for your protection power. We believe that in the midst of all this, your name will be glorified. We pray that you men will come to their reasoning. Men will come to their senses. Men will return to the Lord thy God. Father, even as they will return as men that will hear and return, Lord, show them mercy. Lord, receive them. Lord, forgive them in the name of Jesus. Father, I also pray for as many's hearts that are still hardened, that are still doubting, and still like, oh, is it, is it, is it true? What is she talking about? Father, make them understand what I am talking about. Make them believe in your word and not in my own word. Make them believe in you and not in me. Make them see you and not me. May them experience you in a, in, a, in a way they will understand that it is you who wants them to come back. It's you who died on the cross. It's you who laid your son, Lord. May them know. Give them that grace. Help them to subdue every flesh, every stubborn spirit that is singing song in their brain. Telling them, remain in your, in your sin. Remain in your wherever you are. God, please help them in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive every sin. Let the blood of Jesus wash away every iniquity. Everything that's not of God in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we pray for our nations. We pray for our cities. We pray for our governments. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray for everyone all over the world. Father, we pray for men that are calling you today, crying in their, in their secret places. We pray for those who are still not willing. The Bible said the heart of the kings is in God's hands. He turns them the way it pleases him. Father, turn their hardened heart to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And those who are calling upon you in weeping, in, in tears, Father, do not neglect. Do not neglect, O oh God. Answer them, O oh God. Protect them, O oh God. Be with them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the sick people right now, wherever they are in the world. Let your healing hand manifest in their lives, O oh God. Let them experience your divine healing power. In the name of Jesus. Those who are heartbroken right now, in one way or the other, maybe in their marriage, maybe in their wherever God, in their jobs, in their you know, you know, in their family, in whatever they, 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 they are doing, they are heartbroken in one way or the other. Lord, put peace. Lord, help them. Lord, help them, oh God. Send helpers to them right now. In the name of Jesus. Those who are confused, oh God, put it straight in their brain, in their head. Make everything look good. Put them in order, Lord. Put calmness in their spirit. And show them the right way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, all we need is your peace. Lord, have mercy upon us. The world have seen it, Lord. Oh my God. Your word said for all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Nations have seen that come short of your glory. Individuals have seen that come short of your glory, Lord. And we are here today saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, we bless you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are all that matters to God, Lord. You are all that matters. We bless you, Father. We know you are a merciful God. You will have mercy upon him. You will have mercy upon him. We shall serve you, Lord. Come on. Rebo Shata Bragada. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. My God, my God.
Father, we thank you. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. My God. Rabo shi kata brande rebo satayaga. Remazu de braga de boli yana masinde rebo satayaga. Holy Ghost, we bless you, God. We worship you, God. Oh, yes, Lord. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's all that matters. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We cover our lives with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, we thank God for this meeting. I urge you to please go back to God. And as you do, the Lord will honor you. You will not remain the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you and his hands shall be upon you to save you, to protect you in this season. Now and always, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me once again this afternoon. I'm glad to see you until I come your way again. Keep me your prayers. I'm praying for you as well. Please, let God matter to you. Let him matter to you. Don't leave him. Go in your secret place. Call him. Call him. He will answer you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you all. Until I come your way again. Remain blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Away. Away. You are all the matter.